All right, everyone, let's go into what I am doing here. This is the big change that I have been working towards. Re-racking, building a room, reorganizing, re-cabling, literally a ton of work. We're starting tonight, so I've already been disassembling the stuff that's coming inside here, my own personal farm coming in here, as well, possibly some virtualization servers. I'm gonna show you everything that's happening on Visio so that you can see and follow along with the plans over the next few weeks as I'm doing this construction project and also re-racking project as well. We're going to be putting together some pretty cool hardware and we're going to also at the same time be testing out some really interesting stuff. All right, so at first we're going to be doing the following changes in the garage. So this is a wall that'll be built here, way to keep some of the noise down. It's also going to allow greater directionality of the airflow or so the AC window AC unit here blows in this direction that will allow it to have primarily contact directly on the face of these servers on this rack and these JBods. You're gonna like this arrangement that I've got. I'm gonna show you guys some stuff that's behind the scenes that you haven't seen. I haven't been doing a ton of rack talk recently, but we're about to be really deep into the Chia farm and we're gonna be covering a shitload of rack stuff as a result of that. So up here, we're gonna continue on the 45 degree angle and then we're gonna have it go over here and this little nook that's here eventually will be like for a uh, washer dryer. For now, it's actually going to, after I move the half rack in here, we may move the half rack back out there temporarily. We're just gonna have to see what the noise level's like on the half rack before we make that judgment call. Clearing off the workbench, gonna have two nice monitors up here. Going to have probably the best part of this all, a very large table in the center here, gonna have two drop spotlights over it so we'll get really good lighting and three fixed camera mount position spots so we can get really good shots from a variety of angles on what is actually happening on the workbench. So we can pop something on there hardware wise, check it out and be playing with it and get really good video all at the same time. So this is in the garage, this is a weird garage conversion uh it as interesting because the way that i've kind of engineered this here i'm not actually going to have to take the garage doors off but we are going to be doing some weather sealing around the garage doors i've already been doing some around this window here but we're going to cover all of that when we get to the weatherization part of course earlier we also did a bunch of topics on making sure that the ac was working making sure that the insulation was blown in and that actually has really worked out great and it's super super noise resistant having this at 45 degrees is also a great thing here because this is going to be kind of the loudest orientation front and back when you have servers and when you have servers that have you know sides on them here you're going to get reduced noise and so having this trap here will help capture some of that noise and prevent it from coming into the house. So over here is where, you know, most of the living area is up over here. So let's take a look at this rack. We're gonna look at the half rack also. There's a couple things that I'm still working on on the half rack, but I think when we see the full rack, you guys are gonna like this. All right, here's the plan. So there's two challenges that are big. One, getting an R920 or an R930 up over my head that far. That is gonna be challenging for sure. Uh, the R930 is slightly less weight than the R920s. Even if you take the internal components out, these things are still beast level heavy. But I did get the rest of the rails. I did get the rest of the control arms. So all of the cable management, all of that stuff will be able to happen on these without a huge problem. And as you can see, we're stacked eight deep over here. It's 11,000 kilowatt, uh, but that's really about 10,000 kilowatts conditioned. We got two of those. So that's 20 kilowatts of conditioned power that we've got delivered to these. And each one of them comes with three junctions that are able to L630P out to 220 VAC uh, PDUs. And we've got two of those. So that'll provide two per each rack. That's a perfect layout there so that we can balance PDU A, PDU B, PDU A, PDU B, PDU A, PDU B, and have them going to different actual like endpoints there so that we can balance the power load really effectively as we're scaling out. All right, so one big challenge, getting these above chest level. It's gonna be a brutal thing. Uh, I don't know what to say other than it's gonna be interesting. So make sure you hit subscribe because I might be getting crushed uh, live, who knows? Uh, also, we're gonna take a look here at some of the things that are going on further up. I've got my R2102 up here. I don't think I'm actually gonna put that up there. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, 
it might just be a blank up there. It doesn't seem like it's really needed. So that's one thing that most of the gear that's coming inside the house will be doing. I mean, already all of the networking stuff happens, like the router, the switch, the cable modem, all is inside the house here. It all goes out to a DMARC, got a structured media panel, breaks out from there and goes over to the server rack. So we will continue doing that most likely is my guess. So here we see that we've got the 5548P. This is the PoE Dell Power Connect. This needs to stay on all the time. Uh, these guys over here, the R920s and R930s, they do not stay on all the time. Those eat too much electricity. Even when the switch is turned off, they like power actually needs to be disconnected or they will still eat like almost 100 watts each. So unacceptable for that to happen. We've got, uh, this is not the Patch Max, uh, but it's a similar size and it's a similar kind of thing. These are the finger grommets so that I can run cables down in and up in from the Power Connect 5548. And this is going to be connecting to mainly the house infra and it'll also connect to all the power infra so that I can remote switch on all the power infra for the R920s and R930s if I need to kick them on. As well, we've got the Mellanox 6036. This is our 40 gigabit switch, does both ethernet and InfiniBand. InfiniBand gonna become really important. I'll show you guys why. Uh, but also the Brocade ICX 6610. Uh, this is also a power monster. So having both of those powered down when they're not in use is something that'll save me a little bit of electricity because both of those are really specialty switches that will be mainly in use whenever I'm really cranking on the R920s and R930s. And this is a really, I think, better layout to have than what I have currently because right now it's just a mess. I can't shut off anything without creating giant problems. So having this engineered, and I've got some pretty good lists here of what needs to be plugged in where, I don't think I'm gonna put them in Visio. It seems like it's too much work to put them in Visio. I also am scared to do a network diagram because I'm just too lazy and it's a lot of work, uh, but I should do a network diagram. Here we've got the R520 and underneath that the R720 XD. R520 is probably going to just you know, continue running as Unraid. The R720 XD most likely goes over to TrueNAS. That could get reversed. I don't know. We're going to see. Uh, going to keep the KVM. Like the KVM. KVM, pretty damn useful. Underneath that, we've got the R420. And this is, I mean, the other cool thing about TrueNAS, TrueNAS like RAM. And the R720 XD's got like 448 gigabytes of RAM in it. So that is a really fast write buffer. Uh, and then I also have those three 900p Intel cards. That's pretty exciting. I, I'm fun. I, I have so much fun with those cards already, and I'm just going to have a, a even bigger blast when I put them into true NAS. I have a feeling. Performance on ButterFS is a RAID zero. Uh, performance is ZFS. We're going to measure it, so we'll have A and B, and we can run some different tests and see what kind of performance differences we get. If you wanted truly the best performance, F2FS is probably what I've seen being the fastest go to on those particular cards. And just a single device is like wicked fast with F2FS. Um, underneath this R420, uh, that's, yeah, it's a noisy machine, but it's also, yeah, you know, it's a bunch of 2.5s and I've got a bunch of 2.5 drives. We also have the T620 here. This one I'm debating leaving out there. I'm also debating bringing it in here so that I could plug in more GPUs and put it back to what its original intended purpose was, which was virtualization machine. So a little bit of a conundrum right now as far as what I'm gonna do with the 5950X. I like it. It just doesn't have as many PCIe lanes as I need. So literally they've done this kind of stuff so that they kind of force you into, hey, you wanna be a prosumer? by the Threadripper. Um, and I just would rather buy a server personally, but server loud. So um, send off, let me know what you think. Like it, Threadripper, there's no way that I can figure to get an actual like couple of extra cards in a 5950 setup and get the same speeds that I was after. Maybe, maybe the X570 Tai Chi board, somebody told me could do a pretty good job. So I might go that route. I don't know, we'll see. But also we're about at the end, like this month is the end. So if you got a 5950X and you're thinking about maybe going to Raptor Lake, like I'm kind of thinking about going to Raptor Lake, uh, you might want to consider whether or not you get rid of that at this point in time. Could be about the best time, the last best time that you would have for that particular generation of hardware. Underneath this, we've got a monster and you'll see video of me moving this monster by myself. Uh, this monster is a tape drive, and this is a tape library that is heavy as shit when it's loaded up with tapes. And it is about 250 terabytes of storage. 
great thing about table libraries is that they're slow. No, that's not the great thing about table libraries. The great thing about table libraries is that they can be turned off and still maintain the data for 30 years. Uh, it is actually about six gigabits per second, best case scenario writing to that. And that is per each one of the drives. And this thing can hold four drives. I've only got one in it currently, but with the price of LTO5 coming down and with the amount of LTO5 tapes that I've got, maybe I end up actually putting a couple more drives in it. Maybe I upgraded to LTO6. I know the software in this particular one, uh, and this is an MSL variant. So there's most all, everything is like an MSL variant, which was, I think, BDE Corporation out there that manufactured those. And then people like HP bought them and other vendors bought them. Essentially underneath the hood, it's pretty much all the same stuff. And then down underneath here again, we've got the P, uh, the 9PX, and that is the 11K unit with the... Uh, nice breakout that it's got there and just one battery pack each one of these just has one battery pack and i'm going to talk about that in the context of why i left a gap here tell me if i'm about to make a huge mistake here now this is what should be really exciting to everybody who's following this channel do you see all those 60 bay j bods there infiniban uh not fiber channel fiber channel couldn't get that to work infiniban so these are the netapp de 6600s this is very similar to what you might see in the MD3060E. However, they've got different control modules on them. That appears to be the only thing that's the difference. Those control modules are pretty expensive. So finding out a way to make them work without that so they don't have to go to SAS has been something that I've been endeavoring on. I ended up just leaving some space at the bottom here. This is possibly in case I want to put another couple of battery packs. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should move them down. I I really don't know. You send off. You let me know what your thoughts are on that in particular. But I figured if I have them up high also, these are a little bit easier to get the trays and access to them. Getting getting the trays up here, the discs up there, will be something that is like a ladder endeavor. Uh, these racks are right at, you know, at 42 U's, right about seven foot, seven foot and a half or something like that. So not 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 a little bit shorter or taller than I am. So that's something that'll be interesting. We'll see We'll see how that all shakes out. Okay, and what's coming inside here? So these are two U PDUs at the bottom of my StarTAC 25U uh, rack. These are not eaten. I just couldn't find the ones for APC. Uh, so I've got two of the APCs. They're the RMU 1500Xs or something like that. So those are down there. Those are nice. Um, they're switched. Uh, no, they're not switched, uh, but they are metered and they have switched groups, but they're not individually switched. So I, I can turn on like a whole group or turn off a whole group. But above that, I'm going to have the DS4243 and the DS4246. In between there, I'm going to possibly just leave some gaps here. And the reason why I'm going to leave these gaps is so that in the future, if I want to, I can come back and put additional of these units in here. Now, what is the big difference between how you access a SAS and a block storage device? So let me talk really quick about some things that I've learned here. So block storage, kind of like iSCSI. Uh, if you've ever dealt with iSCSI, you either have a great feeling about it or kind of maybe a mixed bag feeling about it. Uh, and I kind of had a mixed bag feeling about it. So I was really hesitant to engage in using it in the way that I would need to engage in using it for this particular project. However, that changed just because of the cost factors of doing it other ways. So these wonderful 60 bay JBODs are going to be essentially block storage that I'm going to be mounting through InfiniBand on them. So that's different. And once you do that, that essentially is not necessarily like you can just take drive out, move drive somewhere. Uh, you're going to have some underlying things that have happened on the block storage level that the drive is accessing. Now, if you're all in on something as far as a technology, that shouldn't be too big of a deal. And if you've got multiple of them, I don't see that being a problem at all. And as a matter of fact, this is the way enterprises scale out is block storage devices on either fiber channel or InfiniBand or some sort of a SAN technology. So all in all, not that bad. Uh, actually, step up if you want to look at kind of the complete package of throughput that you'll be seeing. Most all of everything I'm doing right now is ButterFS file system. So there's going to be a shitload more ButterFS videos out there that we're going to be putting out. So right here, I've got the SC846, and that'll be the head end unit for all of this. And this probably 
gives me the flexibility that I really want so that I can build a quiet mod inside the SCA46, which is something you can totally do. I've actually done it in this particular one before in the past. Uh, and you can put in your own power supply. You can put in basically everything of, of your own. And that'll allow me, if I put in my own power supply, to have my own uh, PCIe connections that are going to be robust based upon whatever chipset that I'm selecting, which I was hoping to move the 5950X into that and have that be the virtualization machine that powers kind of the house. That doesn't look like it's really going to pan out to be an easy decision to make. So that one's got a lot of question marks on it for me. Now, also here, I've got my cloud router switch and this is my MicroTech. I'll probably pop that in here, but have it facing backwards and that'll provide the connectivity that I need here. Now, another cool thing is I've got my AV unit. So probably put that up there. I couldn't find the AV unit stencil. So this is a stand-in for my Rorantz uh, AVR. Now, there is one thing that I need to account for that I haven't quite got figured out here on this particular layout. And that is, I have an external amp that goes to the head end unit here. So maybe there's enough room for me to back face the cloud router switch because it's actually pretty thin uh, and then put the other uh, power amp in front of it. I think that actually will work. I hope that'll work. Um, and this doesn't have sides. So if I need to you know, get in there and stuff on the sides, it's much more accessible than say getting into the middle of the sides here, which is pretty much impossible. So sound off, let me know what you think about this plan. I have already started moving the SC846. I already got this thing unloaded off of this. This was on the half rack and holy cow. Uh, but I'm gonna have some more videos coming up around this. All of the framing, all of the building, all of the insulating, all of the electrical that goes into making this thing happen will be covered here over the next week. And so that is the plan for the rack reorganization. You can see this half rack. Pretty bumping. As a matter of fact, I am really digging this half rack layout that I've got here. And having 540 disc trays over here is something I'm looking forward to as well. All right, everybody, make sure that you sound off. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. If there's anything that you see here that you think I'm going to kill myself, let me know about that also. These guys over here, these are 920s, 930s, getting them up over my head. I don't know how that's going to happen. It'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting. All right, everybody, make sure you hit subscribe and like. And later tonight, we've got coming up interview with Intertown, all of the stuff he's been building in the Chia ecosystem. And tomorrow, we've got our weekend Chia wrap up, big weekend Chia. A lot of stuff happened. And I'll be covering some of the technicals around the 1.5.1 release that I did not get a chance to get into yet the other day. And also on Sunday, we've got questions answered. So if you have questions, make sure you comment in the comments below or on any video, and I will go through and wrap those up. I usually am gonna try to cut that off at midnight and make sure that I get in everybody. If I have missed anybody, feel free to post it again because I think I missed about a day the other week. Yeah. All right, everybody, check you guys next time and have a great rest of your day.